well, here we are. Conference Championship Weekend. Craziest Conference Championship Weekend I think we've had in a long time because of the coaching changes that have, you know, just intensified the craziness. The scale of things that have gone the way they've gone is just inexplicable. Lincoln Riley is not a head coach of the USC Trojans. Leaving five leaving OU, ten and two OU, eliminated from CFP contention OU, likely going to the Alamo Bowl OU left them for dead. Five star prospects who come from the area who come from the area where Lincoln is going to, California, they're decommitting from Oklahoma as we speak. Several have already de have already decommitted as we speak. Alex Grinch I know of he, he went with Lincoln Riley. And you, and you know how improved that Oklahoma defense has been over the past few years. It, it's steadily improved. It's not completely there, but it's steadily improved. You know. And this was crazy. And we all knew this was coming. We all knew Spencer Rattler entering the transfer portal was coming. We knew that was coming from a mile away. I have no idea who Oklahoma's next head coach will be. And speaking of things that also came out of nowhere, Brian Kelly. He's not Notre Dame's head coach anymore. Where is he going? The Tigers of LSU. Crazy stuff. Insanity. Pure insanity. I, I, like, just think, you know, a couple days ago, th this wasn't even going to, you know, be the way it was, but here we are. Conference Championship Weekend said we're, we're going to make this even crazier. The college football season has been crazy this year. 2021 has been completely insane, and that's not even the last thing that has happened. We got word, a lot of us got word today, you know, that Caleb DeBoer, he's, go, he's going to be Washington's new head coach. We knew that. We've been knowing that for a couple days, but we know now that Jake Hayner transferring from Fresno State, one of the best quarterbacks this year, in my opinion, definitely was a thumbnail for one of these videos way back when, when they stunned UCLA, one of the best quarterbacks this year, in all honesty, with the way he's been playing, and he's likely going to follow the bore over to Washington. So things in the Pac-12 are looking kind of interesting now. They're looking kind of intriguing. You know, Oregon's still there. Utah's still there. But USC and Washington, the foot, football powers in this conference, potentially getting back to the way they used to be. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Pac-12 could be a dogfight in 2022. Like, we all know it's a dogfight year in and year out in the Pac-12. But my goodness. Crazy pure insanity when it comes to coaching okay I, I don't even know I don't even know what's gonna happen next who's gonna be OU's new head coach who's gonna be Notre Dame's new head coach people are talking about Luke Fickle at Notre Dame I have no idea who's going to be Oklahoma's new head coach maybe it could be Brett Benables I have no idea no idea at all I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real with y'all so a couple of big blue bloods have head coaching vacancies insanity so why don't we talk about the New Year's Six yes we might as well before we get into these conference championships the actual conference championships themselves here why don't we talk about you know the New Year's Six a couple of teams have locked themselves into a corner of being in the New Year's Six in my personal opinion Ohio State they are ranked number seven right now Ole Miss is ranked number eight these two teams are likely in New Year's Six no matter what. You know, they're they're likely in no matter what happens this week, in my opinion. Now, there is a team that's still technically in college football playoff contention, but it seems like the New Year's Six is going to be the way that they end up, and that will be Notre Dame. They're waiting. They're waiting for chaos to happen, and it could happen. Chaos could indeed happen this week, but... You know, it's going to take a lot for Notre Dame to get in to the college football playoff with the way things are. Um, so, Notre Dame, I think, they're, I think they're a team that's going to be in the New Year's Six. A lot of 
projections have them going to the Fiesta Bowl. So, you know, Ole Miss is one of those teams that I think is probably going to the Peach Bowl, Ohio State, maybe the Rose Bowl. You know, if things, you know, pan out. Um, these other teams I have listed here, one of these is more so of a lock, but things could change if chaos happens. One of them being Michigan State. They, they could, this this Michigan State team could get kicked out of the New Year Six by virtue of being the unfortunate Big Ten team that's not, you know, ranked high enough. Um, there's a couple others here that I think, you know, could potentially lock themselves into a New Year Six Bowl. One of them being the BYU Cougars, the other being Oklahoma. But it's both of these are more unlikely at this point. You know, Oklahoma probably locked into the Alamo Bowl with the Pac-12 loser, the Pac-12 champion loser, um, you know, it is what it is. So, we'll see what the New Year's Six goes with, you know, as we head into Sunday. So, and a lot of bowl games are getting, you know, started up. Memphis is now a um, Hawaii Bowl participant. Um, Toledo and Middle Tennessee, they're going to the Bahamas Bowl and, um, and uh, I forgot last team, you know, that, oh yeah, East Carolina, they're in the military bowl, so, so some teams already have their bowl destinations lined up, remember we have 83 teams that have qualified for bowling, 82 are going to go, one team, just one, will get left out, and no, one of them is not Hawaii, Hawaii is 6 and 7, they're not eligible, so, one team will get left out, again, likely a max school. A lot of projections have either Ball State or Miami of Ohio out. Uh, so it is what it is, and it's usually the MAC teams that get left out anyway, so it is what it is there. Alright, let's get into it. Friday, Friday night, you know, we got West Kentucky, UTSA, the Conference USA Championship. Obviously, UTSA lost last week. Jeff Trailers, Roadrunners, trying to get themselves, you know, back in the win column. And regardless of where these two teams, you know, finish, you know, who wins this conference championship on Saturday, I think both these teams will be playing on Saturday. They'll be playing that first bowl Saturday, December 18th, excuse me, not 13th. They'll be playing on that first bowl Saturday, December 18th. Um, UTSA was projected in the Indy Bowl, but because of the SEC, you know, getting a whole lot of bowl teams in, um, you know, that probably isn't the destination, you know, now. I know West Kentucky, it'll be, it'll, again, both these teams will probably be playing around, you know, December 17th or 18th, that first bowl weekend. So for Western Kentucky, Bailey Zapp has been one of the quarterbacks that has definitely been underrated this year, who a lot of people haven't seen. They're looking to put the upset on the hill, on the road runners, you know. Frank Harris, Sincere McCormick and company, you know, again, bad game last week. Could the same thing happen to this week, you know, for UTSA? I don't know yet. We'll see. The big one on Friday night, though, it's for the Rose Bowl. It's a rematch of a game from a couple weeks ago. Number 10, Oregon. Number 17, Utah. Both these teams have strong running games. You know, Anthony Brown, you know, been inconsistent this year. Cam Rising having a stellar, stellar year, putting Utah back on the map. And I, I think if this is a repeat of what happened two weeks ago in which Utah demolished Oregon, then Utah will be going to the Rose Bowl, likely to take on Ohio State. And Oregon, they could get a rematch with Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. In all honesty, they really could. It, it could be the thing that happens. I, I really think so. But we'll see. We will see. The first bolded game on Saturday. Obviously, this is a huge game. Let's get as we get into Saturday. This is the one of the biggest games. It's one of the only games in this early slot, you know, because it's the Big 12. And yeah, the Big 12 championship includes the number nine Baylor Bears and the number five Oklahoma State Cowboys. So Mike Gundy and the Cowboys, they're trying to lock up a college football playoff berth. You know, and if they beat Dave Aranda and the Bears, they are in. They are they are basically in. In all honesty, with a win with these wins over with the win over Oklahoma, two wins over Baylor, 
you know, that should be enough to put the Cowboys in. Both defenses we know are spectacular. Spectacular defenses in the Big 12 this year. You know, we've, had, we've seen some damn good defensive games. So for Baylor, they're going to have to have Blake Shapen. I'm not sure if Gary Bohannon is still injured. But he's had, he has a leg injury, you know, still. So I'm not sure if he's, you know, coming back in or not this year at this time. But if, if, if it falls to Blake Shapen, it's going to have to be the running game instead with Abram Smith. And again, these again these are two strong, strong defenses with a cup and, and the, both these teams have pretty strong running games as well. You know, Oklahoma State, they gotta rely on Spencer Sanders to make key plays like he did against Oklahoma. And with the legs of Jalen Warren as well, it could be a interesting battle, you know, early in the Big Twelve Championship, I think. It'll be a really intriguing battle here. The Mac Championship how about some action? Yes, these two teams faced off a few weeks back in a thriller, in a 52-49 thriller a couple weeks ago. And Kent State and Northern Illinois, this is going to be a doozy in Detroit. Gonna be some gonna be something crazy. And we know the Mac we know the Mac has been crazy this year, as it usually has, usually probably the conference with more parity than than even the Pac twelve. Um, I don't know what the prize is because the pack, I mean the Mac has weird bowl tie-in situations like it could be the quick quick lane bowl it could be the Arizona bowl and remember Bar still has the Arizona bowl now so you know duking it out in Detroit it's it's gonna be crazy Dustin Crump for the Golden Flashes and potentially Rocky Lombardi I have no idea because he was not. He wasn't available in Northern Illinois' last game in which NIU lost. Um, so I, I'm not sure what this game entails. I'm probably not watching this game because it is what it is there. Um, and yeah, going to be intriguing. Going to be intriguing a MAC championship as always, you know. So we get into the later games here. That This is where all the money comes from. This is where the money shots come in because, my goodness... We have games that are that we have a four games here that have a lot on the line, a lot on the line, and we're talking. We're going to talk about another head coach here in just a moment. Why don't we get to the Mountain West Championship first? San Diego State, Utah State. We know, we know about the punt king Matt Aracia. We know about this defense for San Diego State, but you know, with with the injuries to Lucas Johnson, can Jordan Brookshire? Be the key for the Aztecs once again. Can't can get this running game get it together because the running game hasn't been as efficient. There's been some problems in the run game for the Aztecs the last couple weeks, and you know San Diego State being in at number 19, you know probably not going to the New Year's Six unless you know something happens. Uh, for Utah State, Logan Bonner has been a it's been a threat this year. It's been a deadly connection between him and wide receiver Devin Tompkins. You know, th these two guys have been hooking up all season long. And Utah State, we know, is a dangerous team. Pretty dangerous team Utah State is. And they were able to get out of the gauntlet that was the Mountain Division. And were able to win it. The bowl probably on the line here is the L.A. Bowl. Probably going up against either like Oregon State or Washington State. Either one in the LA Bowl, the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl, remember? <laughs> and we'll be talking about the LA Bowl probably if San Diego State wins this game. If not, probably not. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just saying. App State, Louisiana, the Sun Belt Championship. Yes, these two teams face off the Sun Belt Championship once again at Billy Napier. Louisiana's head coach. He's now going to become Florida's new head coach. And it's going to be an interesting battle here between Chase Bryce and Levi Lewis. These teams met earlier this year and Louisiana thumped App State. Louisiana's won 11 straight. I'm surprised they haven't been ranked the way they have, but here they are. They're finally ranked. App State, on the other hand, has won six straight. 
Both these teams probably going to be playing on the first bowl Saturday as well. New Orleans Bowl seems to be the destination usually for the Sub Belt champion, but you never know. You never know with these bowl tie-ins and stuff like that. Mountaineers defense has been improved over the past few weeks. They've been playing very well. Louisiana's defense has been playing very well. So this is going to be an interesting battle here between these two quarterbacks. And then the big two. The big two games here, one of them being the SEC championship, obviously the game of the day. Number one versus number three, college football playoff berth on the line for Alabama. If Alabama loses this game, that's it. No more. No more CFP for Bama. And, you know, with this Georgia team, the Georgia is probably in regardless. I don't think there's any way for Georgia to, you know, not get in to the CFP because, you know, thanks to the rankings, they have a top 25 win. They have a couple right now in Arkansas and Kentucky. So there's, the re there's a reason why those teams are ranked where they are, you know. And with Stetson Bennett continuing to improve, Jordan Davis, you know, big defensive tackle, you know, it's going to be an interesting battle between, you know, Jordan Davis, this Georgia front, who we know is deadly, and Bryce Young, who's been kind of shaky lately, you know. I wonder how will Anderson's going to stack up against the Georgia O-line, too, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of players on that Alabama defense like Toa Toa, you know, of course, Will Anderson, you know, I mean, this, I mean, again, both these defenses are pretty damn good. And once again, the battle between Kirby Smart, Nick Saban, juicy, juicy, spicy battle here. And again, if Alabama wins this game, somebody is not going to be happy. It could be Cincinnati. It could be Oklahoma State. Somebody's not going to be happy if things go the way they go and everybody wins, you know, except for Georgia and Alabama wins. If Alabama wins this game, things get a little bit crazy in the CFP race. Remember, there are six teams left in this race, so Alabama could be one of those teams that they beat Georgia. For the other, the number 21 Houston Cougars and the number 4 Cincinnati Bearcats in the American Championship also going to be insanity because Luke Fickle, Desmond Ritter with this tenacious Cincinnati defense led by Sauce Gardner. Oh yes, yeah, Sauce Gardner, one of the best cornerbacks in the country. And potentially a CFP berth will be locked up if Cincinnati wins this game. Dan Holgerson's Cougars on the other hand are saying we want to win 12 straight because they've won 11 straight games with Clayton Toon at the helm. This is an efficient, efficient air raid attack by by Houston. They're looking to play spoiler. If Houston wins this game, they are the team that's going to the New Year's Six. Yes, they will be the New Year's Six representative if they beat the number four team in the country, the Cincinnati Bearcats. I don't think Louisiana or San Diego State would have enough in any case to you know be able to get where they are. So. It could be crazy, these two games right here, so keep an eye out on those. Late, late in the night, you know, the last major window, obviously there's USC Cal, but again, come on, it's USC Cal, both those teams are not playing for a bowl game, so who cares. But, these two games right here, these are going to be doozies, going to be absolutely crazy games. Number 2 Michigan, number 13 Iowa. Good running games here. Once again, Hassan Haskins, Blake Corum, this Michigan front, this O-line has been efficient. Efficient. And Iowa having a damn good running back themselves by the name of Tyler Goodson, who's been showing out these past couple weeks. He's been showing out, playing damn good football himself. We both know these defenses are great. Aiden Hutchinson anchoring this Michigan defense. Riley Moss been a great corner for this Iowa defense as well. You know, Iowa's trying to get through injuries. They've been banged up a little bit. You know, we know that Michigan was banged up a few weeks ago, but now things are starting to get a little bit better. And there's also, again, the QB controversy with Iowa that's been plaguing them for the entire season with Alex Padilla and Spencer Petras. And it's going to be a CFP berth for Michigan if they win this game. If Iowa wins this game, however, 
it shakes up the New Year's Six because they'll be the champs going to the Rose Bowl. Harbaugh, Kurt Ferentz. It's going to be a doozy. I tell you that much. I tell you that much. It's going to be crazy. And last but not least, I know there's actually another conference championship, but I'll cover that in the FCS video later tonight. The last, you know, conference championship to go over is the ACC championship. With the New Year's Six berth on the line, likely the Peach Bowl, you know. And with these two teams, Wake Forest and Pitt, two dynamic offenses with two great passing quarterbacks, Sam Hartman for Wake Forest, Kenny Pickett, Dark Horse Heisman contender, probably in the Heisman race in all honesty himself, you know, with Kenny Pickett, and two great wide receivers, A.T. Perry for Wake Forest, Jordan Addison, who's been stepping up, you know, all season long for Pitt, and this is going to be a barn burner, I'm going to tell you right now, do not sleep on these defenses, however, do not sleep on these defenses. Pitt is one of the best teams in the nation in getting sacks. And we all know, you know, Wake Forest has had some problems on defense this year, but they were able to, you know, get just enough defense, you know, the past couple weeks, you know, to be able to get to this point. So, going to be interesting as the number 16 Wake Forest Demon Deacons take on the number 15 Pitt Panthers. The ACC Championship is going to be a thriller in all honesty. Going to be a great way to pair it off with the Big Ten Championship. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. So that is going to do it for this week. We, you know, the, We're going to wait until late Saturday night to go over all these conference championships. We'll be back you know, early Sunday morning, like around 1130-ish, to see you know, what the... Um, what the selection shows go by and what these um what the major bowl games are and I'll be going through videos throughout the day and everything like that so it will be videos throughout the day I'm um, talking about all the bowl games and stuff like that and all the New Year's Six Bowls and, and, and the playoff and everything like that so we will see we will see what selection Saturday or at a selection Sunday excuse me has in store for us but with that being said, everybody, I'm going to get on out of here and skedaddle, and I'll see you all tomorrow for, for, for the, well, actually, I'll see you later tonight, excuse me, for the FCS second round preview and the SWAC championship. Yes, I did say the SWAC championship. I'm putting that in the FCS second round video. So I'll see you all then, and I'll see you tomorrow for a channel update, so get prepared for that. See you soon, everybody.